Um, I'm David Eisenbart, and I teach technology education at Will Rogers Junior High. I also teach the Gateway to Technology program. Um, I'm a 17-year teacher, and I've taught at the current school that I'm at right now. This is my 10th year. How long have you had uh, digital fabrication tools, that is, you know, additive or subtractive tools, uh, in, in your facility? Um, we have had our fab lab uh, about four years, um, and our fabrication lab consists of a shop bot, uh, a 3D printer. It consists of two CNC mills and a, a laser and a vinyl cutter. So what's, what's, the, what's the robot you mentioned? What is, what's that that you're building? First Robotics. Uh, we compete in First Robotics every year. Um, the first year we competed, we were Rookie of the Year. The last year we had a great robot, but just didn't quite, didn't win, didn't make it to national. Um, but it's a, I wish I had some of the parts here to show you because some of the things that my kids have done are just phenomenal. Um, That's great you're excited about it. It sounds like they are. Yeah, it's, when I talk about my class, we can. I get really excited because <laughs> I, I have some great kids. Um, and I think my kids who have used the, the projects and used the, used the equipment and done some of the projects have an opportunity to do things that they otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to do. Like, like uh, what? Like what specifically? Well, like I have several that, that graduated high school this year. Um, I know I'm a junior high teacher, but I don't stop just at the junior high. My kids come over. My kids come over constantly to my classroom and work. Um, this year, my high school kids brought home, or actually three, three different trophies. My junior high brought home one trophy when we went to national competition. We were first in flight, parliamentary procedures, and third in engineering, in um, 3D CAD engineering. And we, we also were second in the nation in uh, video editing and when we competed this summer. My kids, my kids compete at a higher level. The, the kids that graduated are going to school and for engineering. Um, otherwise, without the equipment that I have, I couldn't have got. They were smart, anyways. Most of them were going to go to college anyway. That went, but not with an emphasis in engineering. This is a totally different field for some of them. They're just. I have one that wants to be. Um, she wants, it. I have two girls that are going in engineering. One wants to be, uh, emphasis, her emphasis is in engineering with research in amputation, the, the amputees. I'm not sure exactly uh, oh, what it's called. working with prosthetics. Right, working with prosthetics. Oh, okay, and, yeah, very cutting edge stuff. Right, and one of them, one of my other girls, she's wanting to get, she's, going to OSU with an engineering degree. I'm not sure what she's, I think it's just mechanical engineering. My boy that can draw almost anything, and he's just out of this world with, with drawing on the computer and, and making things. He can draw, you just lay it down and he can, he can make it or he can reverse engineer it or he can make a part to go with it. Um, he is going in mechanical engineering and he wants a double major in mechanical engineering and um, chemical engineering. Wow. Um, wow. I, I don't know that that's going to happen just because everybody tells me that's really involved, but this kid's just phenomenal. Um, he's awesome. He's not a normal kid. So, um, well, that's, that's really excellent. So, so that's what's going on now. And that sounds amazing. Can you give me a little bit of kind of the before and after? Like, what, what did you do in your program before you had these tools? And how, how has your program changed as you've added digital fabrication capability to your shop and to your, to your, uh, your lesson plan? Now it takes us from just doing the project to actually learning the full manufacturing side of it. This last year we made a, um, a soapbox derby car. Well, the soapbox derby car we made on the shop bot, or at least parts of it. The, um, we cut, we drew it all on the computer, and then we sliced it into segments. And the shop bot cut out those segments out of, I don't know what I'm trying to think, out of wood, anyway, out of, out of some wood. 
And then we, we put uh, we pieced all those segments together with a piece of styrofoam in the middle. And then we, we filed down to that styrofoam and fiberglass over the top of it. My eighth grade junior high kids did that. And they did it all themselves. I mean, they had fiberglass in them forever. They did the drawings. They did the, they did all of that. Um, and we took took our our soapbox derby car to the competition, and we raced in the youth division, but we beat all of the people in the in the adult division. Also, <laughs> that's great. And they all they they all asked me how come I made it. Well, tell me, tell me specifically about the students and, and what sort of effect that's had on them. I mean, it, it, was there was there a difference in in kind of your enrollment, but before and after you had this equipment, was there a difference in in the sort of enrollment the uh, that you had the the kids that were drawn to the program? Well, the enrollment, the interest from all over. Like I said, I get high school students who come over and and work after school. They want to be involved still in my program as they go into the high school. I get higher higher level kids interested in my program. I, I don't just get kids who, you know, who can. Sometimes they just can barely breathe, <laughs> let alone think in a higher level thinking. The kids that want to do this are already thinking now about becoming engineers. They sometimes they take it because it's cool. And then they stay in it because it's it's fun. I mean, they, it's it's a way of making money, a way of becoming successful, doing something that they like and something that they enjoy. So, so is your program cool before you had a digital fabrication laboratory? Um, well, it was always kind of a neat program to begin, but it it just drew it draws now. It's cool all over. I mean, the support from my community comes in. I get huge support from my community. I get huge support from my parents. Parental support is awesome. I'm sorry to interrupt, David, but just so when you when you say your community, you you're saying that you you make connections with industry professionals uh, in in your area, and and they're they're providing you know some some mentoring, some financial support, and sort of cooperation with what you're trying to do and bringing up these kids and educating them. Right, and and I get phone calls now from community saying, hey, when can you bring your kids to our business? We'd really like to see them. We'd really like them to go to our... When can I come talk? I'd really like to talk about some of these things. Uh, there's a, a business a few miles away in another smaller town around here. He wants to come talk to my kids about what they're doing in my class, and he wants me to bring them out because they have a free... Or not a free, but they have a a, he makes a cabinet and he has a, a router similar to the shop box and he wants my kids to see what he's actually doing. I, I think part of it is he wants my kids to see that they could potentially work with him or work for him or own their own business or, or something similar to that. But he wants my kids to come out to his program. He donates a lot of materials to my class. Um, they come to me now because word of mouth, people invite me to my me and my kids to come speak. I used to get invited occasionally before, now I get invited constantly. It seems like everybody in my community wants to be involved in some way associated with, with helping it out. What I do see that it's fostered also at the high school is they have now started an engineering program at the high school. This is their second year for that. I think a lot of that came from the things that we were doing in the junior high. They came from the junior high with no place to go, and I have this huge following of, of high school students, even today, who still come back. Um, as a matter of fact, today I, I left the, high, the junior high at about, I don't know, 5 o'clock, and the last student to leave wasn't a junior high student. He was one of my high school students who came back. <laughs> um, and, one that's, and, and, he, and by all means, he's not one of the the upper level. He's one of him and one other girl are, are vying for the valedictorian of the school, the top place. I mean, that's the caliber of students that I have that continually want to come back and work in the program with the program. He's been a mentor before in my room. 
he's, um, he stays after school and helps. Those are the kind of kids that we foster, that this stuff, it hits everything they want to hit and it excites them. The sky's the limit. There is really no limit and that's kind of the way I use my classroom. There's no limit. If you can dream it, you have the time to work with it, I'll give you as much time as you'll give me and we make some really cool things. And I'm, I'm to the point, we just hired a second teacher at the junior high. Um, the junior high, the sixth grade now, is taking technology engineering at the junior high. It's been only before seventh and eighth grade, but there's such an interest even down, downward, starting sixth grade and working out. So I, I'm thinking it's going to continue to grow. And, and, and I would like to thank Grant, the great person, and uh, great technical support. <laughs> By the way, I do have a question for you. This is not related to your interview, but I want to ask you now before I forget. Okay, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, I need, I want to make a guitar. 